What's going on? Why do Chinese people walk their dogs in cages or are putting their dogs in plastic buckets? It all started on October 16, 2023. On that day, a two-year-old girl in Chengdu was bitten by a pet dog that was left unattended and went to the ICU, triggering a public outcry. Many netizens furiously blamed the dog owner. Subsequently, many governments of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, declared to strengthen the management of dogs and cats in their jurisdictions. Some places conducted inventories of pet dogs, while other regions severely punished behaviors such as walking dogs without leashes. At the same time, many parts of China launched a vigorous campaign to catch and destroy cats and dogs. Cheng Guan or bylaw officers are not only catching stray dogs or cats, they are also keeping a close eye on pet animals. Whenever they see cats or dogs whose owners aren't around or walking them without a leash, Cheng Guan officers start to act. In some cities, the government has declared that larger dogs which have exceeded the size specifications are also required to be taken away. The scale of the campaign is unprecedented. From the developed cities in the east to the backward areas in the west, from the busy metropolises to the small cities and towns, Cheng Guang have worked from morning to night with great vigor. Moreover, security guards in various neighborhoods have also stepped in to help with the task. Even in the dark of night, these guards won't let go of unleashed dogs being carried in their owner's arms. In some cases, dogs are even at risk of being hijacked while their owners are walking them. Netizens have complained that the government is trapping dogs indiscriminately. In addition to government departments taking action, under the flame of the official media, the private sector participation in the campaign is unprecedentedly high. Many residents who used to have no feelings towards cats and dogs have increased their hatred of these pets for no apparent reason. Cases have been reported that people dropped poison food or small white tablets in neighborhoods. On October 21st, a resident of Jiangsu province found that a large quantity of poisoned sausages was left on the lawn when walking his dog. He said that he had a large dog that used to work for the police. He led it around the neighborhood and found three poison pieces of sausage. He posted the news in the homeowner's group chat. Some offered feedback that there were already victimized cats and dogs after eating the poisoned sausages, and they felt quite scared. Subsequently, dog lovers and dog trappers have started heated debates. The official rhetoric of the CCP focuses on sheltering and rescuing stray dogs and cats. In reality, many of the trapped dogs are not stray dogs but have owners. China lacks animal shelters, and most of the stray dogs and cats captured by the government prior to this movement were either destroyed or sold to slaughterhouses and became food on the table. The fate of the cats and dogs that have been trapped in this campaign isn't likely to be any better. Due to the high-pressure campaign, many pet owners must take countermeasures to protect their pets. This has resulted in the spectacle we see above. In addition to trapping stray animals, in some parts of the country there are officials breaking into residents' homes and arresting their pets. On October 24th, Shanghai Baoshan District deployed 18 special police officers. They entered a home and arrested a 16-year-old German Shepherd that could barely move. The dog was incidentally a retired police dog. The government's briefing to the public reads, on October 24, 2023, a resident reported that a certain resident of Seaside Village 3 illegally kept a large aggressive dog without a license and there were many occurrences of non-compliant behaviors such as walking the dog without a leash or a muzzle, which caused great disturbance in the daily lives of the neighboring residents. After receiving the report, the Street Peace Office, in conjunction with the police officers of the District Public Security Bureau, Seaside Police Station, staff of the Street Dog Management Office, and officials from the Neighborhood Comprehensive Management jointly carried out a door-to-door -door rectification operation. In order to prevent accidents, the District Special Squad arrived at the scene to cooperate with the operation. During the rectification process, the dog owner voluntarily opened the door and communicated with the staff. Under the persuasion of the staff, the dog owner recognized the risk of keeping dogs illegally and voluntarily handed over the dog to the relevant departments for shelter and disposal. 
Later, the dog owner said keeping a large and strong dog brought him a lot of inconvenience in his daily life, but no one was willing to adopt it. He thanked the government for helping to solve the problem. How can a dog so old that could barely move cause great disturbance to the daily lives of neighboring residents? But after the SWAT team arrived, the only option the dog owner had was to thank the government for their help in solving the problem. It's ironic that a dog that used to serve the police force was taken away by the SWAT team simply because there was a new political movement. Netizens mocked, good job, real buff, real bull. A SWAT team turns out to be used in this fashion? The three mainstream mouthpieces of the CCP regime were even mentioned by netizens. CCTV News, People's Daily, and People.cn. The frantic trapping and extermination of cats and dogs across China has triggered heated debate. Many netizens pointed out that such a campaign happened because of the CCP's love for political movements and enforcing law in a political movement style. Why is it that stray animals are now destroyed whenever they like, and there is no mercy in treating the vulnerable? They destroy them with no discretion and leave no room for them to live. Why? It's simple, very simple, in their mind. That group of people, that generation of people, they have no regard for life. Why? Because when they were young, their parents and their grandparents had never been treated as human beings. It's very simple. Now the media is advanced and people know what happened right away. But think about 30 years ago, when the single child policy was in place, right? If you were pregnant and wanted to give birth to a second child, the aborted fetus wasn't treated as a human, but it was alive, right? It was destroyed outright. If a human isn't treated as a human, not to mention the animal. That's what happened to my dad. My dad was poor when he was a child, and when I was a child, I wanted to take our pet to see a vet. My dad said, why do you care about the dogs and cats when people don't even have enough to eat? So this kind of behavior is a product of a certain era. Young people nowadays like cats and dogs and care for them. It's actually a weakening of human nature. The love of pets has nothing to do with any era, be it old or new. The Qing emperors Qianlong and Kangxi loved cats and dogs, right? It has nothing to do with being rich or poor. In Asian times, when a person wanted a cat, he had to make a letter of engagement, didn't he? Cruelty towards animals only happened to the group of people who survived and grew up during the darkest period of a society's development. Now this group of people has become managers of society. You know what I mean? It's the group of people left behind by the various political movements, the group of people who like to show off their power, who are arrogant with just a bit of power. They bully their wives, abuse the animals and the homeless, lashing out their moods. That's right. They are a group of people who are incompetent and can't do anything real in life. Now they have a bit of power and they're out trapping dogs. They feel great and they feel manly. They're arrogant. They're the type of people who don't know who they are with just a bit of booze. Now they're empowered with the public stamp and a red sleeve ring, and they feel so good about themselves, you know? When there is a large-scale movement like this, quotas are often imposed, leading to the grassroots to do whatever they want to meet the quotas. Some netizens dug out a procurement contract published on the Beijing Municipal Government Procurement Network in 2022 as evidence. This contract shows that the Chaoyang branch of the Beijing Municipal Public Security Bureau set up a project to hire a dog trapping company to assist in law enforcement in December last year. It has a budget of 2.386 million yuan, or more than US 320,000, to hire a company to deal with the incidents of dogs injuring people in cleaning up stray dogs in the jurisdiction. The contract requires that no fewer than 5,000 dogs be collected and rescued in a year with respect to injured, ownerless, abandoned, stray, and quarantined dogs, and that the Chaoyang Public Security Bureau be ranked no lower than third in the annual dog intake assessment. The deadline for completion of the contract is December 20th, 2023. Such a movement is reminiscent of the Cultural Revolution in the last century. 
At that time, it was Mao Zedong who acknowledged the violent revolution and made the students feel that they had power. Many people lost their lives because of it. Now, similarly, the government has issued notices to make these grassroots workers feel that they have the right to dispose of cats and dogs with no regard for any life forms. With the rising public cries, the government may have felt that it's time to take a breather. It can be seen from the pieces published by major official media. The iFung.com issued an article titled, Movement-style dog trapping should not be used, for it will not only fail to solve the problem, but also lead to disaster. The article mentions that stray dogs themselves are victims of human-made disasters, and that dogs shouldn't be executed out of either compassion or reason. In solving the problem of walking dogs without a leash, the article gives the following advice. Only by penalizing dog owners can the problem of off-leash dogs be completely solved. The first time, the owner will be fined RMB 200 yuan, criticized and educated, and then sign a pledge to keep a dog in a civilized manner. The second time, there should be a fine of 1,000 yuan and mandatory participation in rectification measures of uncivilized dog keeping. And if they refuse to participate, their workplace should be notified. The third time, there should be a fine of 5,000 yuan, confiscation of the dog, inclusion in personal credit profile, notification of his workplace, and reduction of his salary or retirement benefits. To summarize, it's the typical approach of the CCP regime. Threaten one with one's future. The article mentions that in a society where everything is about money, economic means are often the best way to govern. It's true, this approach works, but the essence of the problem lies in the decline of morality. It's understandable why the article gives such practical advice as the society is becoming more and more realistic under the leadership of the Communist Party. Utilitarianism has really poisoned us for too long, as if everything that is not useful should be eliminated. My dad had a Tibetan mastiff called Wang Cai for over 10 years. He had it raised in the countryside. It was mainly cared for by my grandpa. I witnessed the puppy growing up and becoming a large dog, diligently and devotedly guarding the family for more than a decade. By the time he got old, he couldn't move much. Everyone knew that he probably wouldn't live much longer. Then there came a dog meat dealer in the village. My dad and grandma persuaded my grandpa, saying that a dog this large weighed dozens of pounds would be hard to haul and bury when it died. So it would be a good idea to take advantage of the opportunity when someone was here to collect dogs and sell it. One would make some money while saving the trouble of burying the dog when it died. So the dog meat dealer took the old dog that was over 10 years old in the end. At the beginning of this year, I asked my grandpa about this, and he looked solemn and sad. We chatted about the cat we had before called Cat 3. It was buried under one of the pine needle piles behind the house. That was a couple of years ago, too. At that time, my dad said to him, why bother to bury a cat that will decompose naturally anyway? This incident seems to show that my dad just doesn't care enough about the lives of both the dog and cat. But in reality, a person's beliefs and his behaviors are always unified. There isn't much difference between the way one treats animals and the way one treats human life, only that the latter isn't as blatant. In June this year, my grandpa passed away due to a serious illness. I flew back from Shandong for a week, but because he was in the ICU during that time, I didn't technically see him for the last time. Before the cremation, I wanted to see my grandpa. My dad came over and put me aside, saying that there was nothing to see after he was gone and that it would be scary. Not only did he not let me have the last look, he didn't even take a look himself. When the cremation took place, he didn't even stand outside to pay his respects. But when he came to the memorial service, he acted like a filial son, keeping the wake, kotoing, holding a mic, thanking all the leaders who came to my grandpa's funeral. At that moment, I felt sick to my stomach that my dad was like a miniature of an abuser who had been poisoned to the core by elitism. 
You see the pursuit of appearance and hear the talk of rules, order, and human kindness. But in reality, the indifference was so obvious. He has missed the important things of being a human being. Elitism is toxic. The belief that one is only as strong as oneself, or else one deserves to be left to the mercy of others. Only the strong have power, while the weak and useless have no business being around, let alone helpless animals. The way a society treats kittens and puppies is similar to the way it treats the vulnerable. It's important to remember that no one can stay on top of a toxic set of rules forever. Sooner or later, the boomerang is going to hit you in the head, because at the very least, each of us grows old, and having been poisoned by this set of rules for too long means that there is no way to cultivate love, and sooner or later, we're going to get what's coming to us. And a society that seems to preach fairness according to strength has no love as its foundation. It rejects love, and is based on the principle of usefulness. How can it not be a swarm of devils when man is all subservient to economic agendas and is so keen to instrumentalize everything that they're incapable of meeting even the basic requirements of being human as a living being on Earth? Only tools need to be useful, but usefulness is not the purpose of life. A life is more than just being a school. Does anyone still remember the incident in March 2022 when people had their dogs eliminated during the quarantine period? Here was the story: A Weibo user reported online a homeowner was quarantined and the pet dog was kept in a warehouse at home. Seven surveillance cameras were installed in the warehouse, but six were taken away by the anti-epidemic staff on the grounds that samples had to be taken. Only one installed at a corner was left, as it wasn't discovered. Later, the anti-epidemic personnel notified the homeowner to disinfect the home. When the owner turned on the surveillance camera, he found two staff wearing protective clothing used the dog trap on the dog. They didn't notify the owner that they wanted to destroy the dog. Then the dog owner watched his pet be eliminated in front of his eyes. The campaign, guided intentionally by the CCP, invariably gives power to a certain group of people. It has made them overpowering. Power is used to terrorize others. In this way, it instills fears in people and helps secure the regime. It isn't difficult to see that dogs now locked in cages and taken away by the SWAT team are no different from people who were demanded to relocate and be quarantined at that time. Both are deprived of liberty, but very few Chinese dare to ponder over why they are suddenly deprived of their freedom.